afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I'm super. I like that. Okay, I keep it short. It's not my part. It's about uh, Celine um, and her analysis, spatial data analysis for gender policy lobbying, I think in Mexico, if I'm uh, correctly so. Uh, the floor is yours. And yeah, let's see what is going on. Thank you. Um, so hello, I'm Celine. Uh, I'm French, but I live in, uh, in Mexico. I studied there and I, I'm working there too. Um, and uh, this is um, a sort of tool between projects I developed uh, as um, um, civic data activism about gender. Uh, I will give some context because um, it's a real concern in Mexico in this moment in maybe, and maybe in all the country history. The insecurity that leaves uh, women um, in, the, in Mexico City and in the country. And um, the level of normalization uh, people um, consider this, this issue. So uh, actually um, the UN um, estimate that, that nine women uh, and girls are, are killed every day in the country. So that's, that's really huge. And um, 4,017 feminicides from in the first semester of this year. Uh, and only in the Mexico City, uh, almost 3,000 women are victims of sexual, sexual abuse and assault um, in the same semester. Um, the other problem is that we have very few data from the government to study the problem. So it's an incomplete data, an, an, um, an update, and uh, bad quality data. Because one of the first problems is that the um, sexual violence is not well typified. So when women um, report that in the police um, offices, generally they suffer violence there from the officials and um, crime, crime is not well typified. So at the end, we don't have data and we have to organize um, by society to create the data, to analyze, analyze the data and to uh, try to change the normalization there is about this topic in the country. So um, in the last month, uh, the city had very large manifestation about, about that. Um, after a violation by policemen to a young, uh, young lady. And uh, that was a um, pretext to work more on the topic and to create um, a dialogue with the government of the city. So what, what I am doing in this topic, um, in general I have several projects where, where I try to, um, to promote civic data collection. I work with several um, um, communities, so in OpenStreetMap community, in GeoChica's community, and um, all, all sorts of activisms that um, um, have a relationship with the city, so pro-pedestrians collectives, um, cyclists collect collectives, etc., etc. We are try to um, teach them uh, to how to analyze data and how to use this analysis in gestion with the government to um, to achieve their causes. So um, through this project, I try to promote report culture because a main part of the civic data can be collected through um, uh, social media, so uh, that they exist is if, if people report. So that's, that's the main point. Um, so why, why urban data? Um, one of the main space and time where women are, are totally vulnerable is uh, what we call in urban planning the first and the last miles. So the little space when people go out of their, their um, house and walk maybe to take a transport, to go to the transport station or just walk to their activities or just take a taxi or just take their own car. So this little space can be a little space or a large space. It's a space where people are, are exposed, exposed to everything and, and, and security and specifically women are exposed there. So um, I also want to, uh, I go back there, I, I also want to um, make the public understand that when we are talking about women, we are talking about every type, every profile of woman, every age, with uh, different difficulties, different needs, and um, in terms of public space. So uh, we have elderly women, we have women with disabilities, um, 
we have children, we have young ladies, etc., etc., and the insecurity has to be understood in a very large way. So, um, part of the exercise um, are about creating the data in the streets. So, we we make uh, through an exercise called Purple Street uh, walking focus group where we define um, a tour, a little tour in a specific zone of the city. Uh, with users of this zone, so it can be inhabitants, it can be they can be uh, students, employees of, of this zone. Um, we try to have a large range of profile in, in the group, uh, profiles of women, and we observe the space, we talk about uh, our feeling in this space, our fears in this space, and uh, with what we say, we make an audio mapping and a photo mapping with mapillary. We create the data, we have the data on the map, and this map helps us to uh, have an assessment material to, after that, mm, work, work with the local government through the uh, collectives or, or associations. So I just give the methodological support for that, and I empower, it's, it's um, the objective at the list, I empower the collectives uh, to have them doing this gestion with government. And the audio mapping, or at least the fact to talk a lot about what we feel, helps a woman to explain, to express what they feel, uh, helps a woman to understand what they feel, because uh, it's very common that we are not very conscious of what we feel, uh, of our fears, of our uh, conduct in the space, small micro micro conduct, for example, changing um, the way we talk, we walk um, in the street, etc. Depending of any element of uh, uh, our surrounding, and it allows to classify and to hierarchize um, elements that uh, impact on our experience. So with these indicators, it's la at the end they are indicators, we are, uh, we are able to work more quantita quantitatively. So this is another ex exercise with people with disability and disabilities, uh, where also we walk, we observe how we walk, uh, all the difficulties due to the um, physical space, and we take, we document these problems with photo, uh, photo mapping with mapillary. And we, and we try to, f to have people doing, the, doing that, reporting in so social media in their daily life. So it's not, it's not ju just in the moment of the exercise. We try to, um, to teach uh, a behavior, a uh, uh, reporting behavior. Um, so these are um, light visualization of the products. It's very pixelized, but this is audio, audio mapping. Uh, we did that with Osmond, um, and we are in process to upload that on a web map. And this is a map on Mapillary. As we use a, a, the same uh, user account in Mapillary, if we, if we look for, if we filter in Mapillary with the account of Calles Violetas, it's, it's in Mexico, Mexico, we have all the points documented by this exercise with women. Um, so after that, um, with the benefits of the indicators, we were ab able to create, thanks to, to these exercises. The point is not to mm, develop the exercise in the whole city, in the whole country, but having uh, several exercises in several points, uh, with several climates, several type of city, big cities, mm, small city, we can have indicators and with these indicators about all type of uh, urban elements, uh, the idea is to create an audit instrument. So this is part of a project. Um, I work with the NGO where I was working, WRI, uh, World Resource Institute, with the World Bank, where we developed uh, a whole audit instrument. So all the, um, the indicators we create with, with Calles Violetas, <coughs> can be put in a table and we can weight uh, every indicator we observe, we just observe in the, in the public space, walking again or uh, using uh, street, view, street view photos, so it can be with Google, but uh, prefer preferently with Mapillary. We qualified uh, any photo and we are able to make zones using a grid in the city. 
So um, I'm quite finishing. Um, so with with that, um, we can use uh, this data. We can also use data from OpenStreetMap. So observing the type of elements detected through the others exercise. Um, these elements existing in OpenStreetMap and also with other sources. For example, in Mexico, we have a good National Institute of uh, Geography and Statistics that uh, describe all the urban zones. So we know how is every block uh, in terms of um, mobility. We know where are some trees, some um, um, different elements of the streets. And uh, I created a, a special index to try to qualify, qualify every um, every um, part of, uh, of the grid of in Mexico City. Uh, ideally, it can be developed actually uh, at the national level because all the data exists if we use OpenStreetMap and, and the National Institute data. So uh, it is different weighted for pedestrian, for women pedestrian, and for women pedestrian by night. Considering that the woman pedestrian by night is the most vulnerable person, so if the space is uh, qualified as secure or insecure for, for her by night, we can consider it secure or insecure for everyone. So this is part of the result. It's, it's still in progress. So. Um, it's not totally adjusted. Uh, I have to integrate more elements. This is by day. This is for women by day. So the yellow color is bad and the green color is good. So we can see that for women, we have less medium values uh, and, more st and stronger bad values. And this is by night. So the good values lose, um, lose weight and the bad value gain. Um, so, at the end, it's a work in progress. Uh, we are still developing it. So, um, the objective with that is, as I said, working with local governments. Um, I have yet worked with local governments. With uh, in Mexico, we have an institution called the Women Institute that's worked on so, um, gender violence, uh, health, and several topics, and uh, they. They tried now to, to develop this methodology with, um, in several cities with groups of women. It's a way also to integrate local groups of women and to have to gain uh, consciousness in the space and to integrate. Uh, it's, um, the second objective is to have citizen involvement in a long-term effort because um, I try to, ha to have people tweet Tweet information, um, use Mapillary to also share in Twitter um, some specific elements of the space they consider in their daily life um, is insecure, etc. And it's about to um, to teach also to public institution what is a way to have a real citizen participation and not a demag demagogic one where we just make some survey to to legitimize some action. Um, this more slow and permanent effort is about a real uh, citizen participation. And at the at the end. It also helps governments to um, start to manage civil data because one of the typical ideas in Mexico at least is that only the public official data have a good value but it's very bad uh, built so it really don't have a good value and it's time to, um, to, to change the paradigm and um, help them to change their, their paradigm, paradigm to integrate more, more sources, big, da big data and civic data from um, social networks. That's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Celine. Are there any questions? Thank you for the talk. Um, I actually was wondering, have you documented your procedures somewhere and are they available? Because at least in Brussels, I know of associations who would be very interested by this kind of approach as well. Uh, I hope so. 
In part, uh, I mean, this is part of, my, of an activism, so it's in my free time, so it's it's hard. But yeah, in part, I I try to have the more optimist um, way to document. Um, so I have a blog. I have a blog. I update the blog with uh, any new exercise, any new conclusion. Um, it's a more quick. It's the quickest way to do that, but it's not enough. I know. So I would have to to do more. I, I can. Um, you could follow Geochicas maybe in network. I think I, I would put their um, news if I do that. Yeah. Um, when you when you collect information, okay. When you collect information um, from women, do you uh, use any app or any other uh, environment to collect information directly from uh, women? Yeah, we we work in the street with Mapillary. Uh -huh. uh, it could be Open Street Cam too, but. Uh -huh. um, I, I always use Mapillary, so it's it's uh, easier. It's also easier for for people to upload the data. It's, it's more friendly, I think. Uh, and Osment for the audio mapping. Osment is not very friendly actually, but um, it's part of an exercise I I organize. So I I use the app. Uh, I, I make the audio and I put it. Uh, in a web map, so this is in process. Yeah, for audio map, I don't know. If you know some app more friendly, I please tell me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, other questions? Oh. Uh, just a question on, uh, have you had any uh, success with the government in terms of in local government with actually implementing any changes like just adding a new street light or for example uh, one of the experiences we made with the women institute in mexico city um, was about integrating the results in uh, redesigning uh, local plans or so in the um, delegation we call delegation in a, a little part of the city so the government of this delega delegation um, wanted to integrate to, to the results to, to define which spaces exactly, which, which elements change to change first. No, it was a question of uh, hier hierarchization. Um, it's a point. Uh, it's also a point not exactly with uh, this exercise, but more related to cyclist mobility. So with gender, but not totally. Um, Another city, a medium city called Morelia, uh, defined a cyclist, um, cyclist plan at city level to help people to move sa more uh, safer. Yeah. Sorry for my en English. Sorry, <laughs> Um, yeah, do you know what your rate of accuracy is in terms of safety? At, at the end of the day, you're just walking around and uh, looking at things and thinking, this feels safe, this doesn't feel safe. So is there any way uh, you know what you've done is, is good? And second question, do you have any success stories uh, following what you did so far? Success stories as in? OK, um, so first part. Um, it is still under development, so uh, I am still adjusting the criteria. Actually, I think I have to put more data on, on land use. Um, and I, I did it on the city I know, and it's my way to, to evaluate if, uh, if it's accurate. Um, it can't be totally accurate uh, because uh, it uses partial data. OpenStreetMap is imperfect, but um, so. Uh, and also the, the public official data is very general, so it has defects, um, default. But uh, for now it's a way I have to evaluate. So the idea is also to make some group working with the results and evaluating where, where they live. It's a question of perception a lot. I want, I want people to be able to express perception and not only facts. So that's the point of working with audios too, to have um, totally uh, in-depth uh, information, just, just not facts. And I don't have still um, a success story because it's a process. It's the beginning of a process. 
So uh, when you talk about the first and the last mile, it made me think about the fact that in some cities now um, you can request, when you get the n a night bus, you can request a stop between two stops so you can have, you walk less to your destination because of safety. So I was wondering if you tried to link uh, your data with maybe public transportation data so you could improve or at least find suggestion to improve the the night buses or something like that? Um, in Mexico, 80% of the transport system is totally informal. So there, are, there is no stop station. Yeah, we have the metro, we have the metro bus, and that's all. all the, um, the rest of the transport system is totally okay. yeah. white. So yeah. no um, actually, no. Yeah, it's a, it's a problem for urban planning. Good. Thank Any more you. questions? Then maybe we can hear from you next year and the year after when, when you have more data. Hopefully. Um, good luck. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.